it's Dan here from Play3DS and it's time for another mailbag video but today uh, I actually haven't ordered anything new off the internet in a while so I'm going to be looking at four games that I picked up on a whim at GameStop so just because I want to keep this series going let's get into it. The first game is a game that I originally bought when it first came out but then sold for no reason other than I didn't have enough money to buy a, another game I wanted but I, I've been meaning to buy this game again for a long time. It's called Pokemon Conquest. And it's a, a great game for fans of um, turn-based strategies and um, the Pokemon series alike. And I consider it probably the best spin-off in the game. Now in Japan, the game is known as Nabunaga's Ambition. And it's a role-playing strategy video game developed by Tecmo Koe and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo DS. And uh, this game came out in 2012, I believe. Uh, let's see. North America, June 18th, 2012. Pokemon Conquest came out. And I bought it that day, and I, I didn't know that it was only for DS. I thought there'd be a 3DS version available. So I went to the store and bought it, and I left, and I realized, I was like, oh, this is a DS game. But um, I went back in the store, and they're like, yeah, they don't have that for 3DS. So I was a little bummed because you had to play on the uh, 3DS with the uh, you know chopped off screen sides. Uh, but then once I got into the game, I was like, this is really awesome. The art direction is great. It's got this sort of old school samurai warrior type thing uh, with you know a map for going between levels, just like in Fire Emblem. And you have your Pokemon characters who can do you know different moves. And it sort of felt like Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics. And um, the strategy was a little different though. Uh, it sort of has that isometric view of the stage and you have your Pokemon and um, you fight other Pokemon. And the difference here is that you also have a warrior who has powers like in Advance Wars um, and those powers allow you certain advantages during battle. So it's a great game uh, and I would just encourage anybody to check Pokemon Conquest out. Um, I got this one for like $22 at GameStop, but you might be able to find it for cheaper online. I was waiting for my friend Jordan to send me a copy because he said he didn't really play it, uh, but he said his brother was playing it and I've been waiting for like a year, so I finally just caved in and bought it. On the Wikipedia page for Pokemon Conquest, the game received positive re reviews possessing a score of 80 out of 100 on Metacritic, which is a website, for those who don't know, that takes the aggregate of all the other review, main review sites and user scores and sort of gives an average of those. Um, so that's a good score, 80 out of 100. And then another website, uh, Famitsu, gave the game a score of 34 out of 40, with reviewers praising the game's accessibility for young players, high replay value, and ability to mix Pokemon with traditional Japanese historical setting, which is definitely evident in this sort of warrior traditional Japanese themes um, and the music as well which is really cool. Uh, IGN gave the game a score of 9.0 and I remember that review because Audrey Drake reviewed it. She used to call us Koopalings, uh, the, the listeners of Nintendo Voice Chat, the IGN Nintendo podcast. Uh, so she gave it a 9.0 and it got an Editor's Choice Award. Little fact is that Audrey Drake, you know, little known fact, Audrey Drake now works for Nintendo and she was there at Nintendo Treehouse for last year's E3 to help display some of the games like Yoshi's Woolly World. Anyways, uh, Destructoid gave this game uh, 8 out of 10 and Game Informer gave the game a 7.0 out of 10. Now in 2012 in Japan, the game sold an estimate of 341,000 copies, though we do not have that figure for the United States. Uh, my personal opinion is that this game is highly overlooked and a great game for people who are into turn-based strategy, um, you know, strategic RPG games. What am I saying here? It's for people that are into turn-based strategy games and, and definitely someone who hasn't experienced a turn-based strategy game. This is one to check out because it's not really difficult, um, at least to start with. So it's, it's really easy to learn. So that's uh, Pokemon Conquest. Okay, the next game I want to talk about before I get to the final, and I have two more, I have three more games here, but before I talk about my favorite one, I have two sort of other games I picked up on a whim because they were so cheap, and I figured why not have them in my collection. Now, the first one is our launch game for the 3DS called Steel Diver, and it's a submar submarine game, 
that uh, I really don't know too much about besides it, it uses the gyroscope in uh, some interesting ways to uh, control the submarine and, and, and fire uh, torpedoes and such. But the uh, game was sort of... Uh, people were upset because it felt more like a tech demo and um, wasn't really a strong launch game, but a lot of people uh, ended up playing it because it was a launch game. Uh, and from the Wikipedia, it says it's a side-scrolling action game in which the player controls a submarine. How do you say that? Submarine via a set of touchscreen-based lever levers and wheels. Wow, exciting! And uh, Shigeru Miyamoto described it as being almost like you have your own submarine pet in an aquarium. Which I don't get how a submarine's a pet, but you know, Shigeru Miyamoto, more power to him. And the uh, game is, was followed up by the free-to-play entry called Steel Diver Sub Wars. So if you're looking for your submarine fix and uh, you don't want to pay like 2 or $3 at GameStop for a used copy of this, or like $5 for a new copy online, just download Steel Diver Sub Wars and you'll probably have just as much fun, if not more, because that's a free-to-play game and it's online. And uh, from what I know, this doesn't have anything online. So uh, that came out actually back in May 12, 2011, and um, let's see here. Reception. Steel Diver has received mixed reviews as of June 2011. Metacritic's aggregate score is only a 58 out of 100. However, IGN gave Steel Diver a 7.0 out of 10, praising it for its addictive gameplay, but gave caution that the slow-paced strategy is not for everyone. Contrarily, Game Informer gave the game a 4.0, praising its music and sound but criticizing the multiplayer and knob-moving gameplay during a time limit and chaotic levels. Now, I guess there's a multiplayer, which I didn't know about. I don't know if it's online or not, but uh, you can Google that. <laughs> and the official Nintendo Magazine awarded 61%, criticizing its lack of content, saying, wait until the price dies for a the depths before you consider a purchase, which is exactly what I did in picking this up for about $2.50 today. So that's Steel Diver Sub Wars. Not much to say about that. But my next game also came out in 2011. <laughs> Now, the next game I got here is PES 2011. I think it stands for Pro Evolution Soccer. This game was like fun. Let's see. Yep, Pro Evolution Soccer 3D. It was like $5, and it's a soccer game. Uh, I've always heard people playing FIFA and stuff, so I figured why not have a soccer game in my collection. Um, now, it's probably not like a super great game, but I, I think it got decent scores. Uh, I did turn the game on for a moment just to see what the graphics look like, and I was fairly impressed. I think they're pretty good graphics for a, th a 3DS. It looks like um, something that might have been on PS2 or... Um, I was just, they were pretty clean graphics and uh, the soundtrack sounded like, uh, you know, all the cheering and stuff. So it was kind of, you know, it was what you expect from watching soccer on TV pretty much. Uh, I don't know how well it stacks up to FIFA because I'm not really a FIFA player. My guess is that this is, you know, much inferior, but it's a on-the-go portable soccer game. That's pretty much all there is to say about it. Let me, okay, surprisingly on Metacritic... Uh, PES 2011 got a 73 um, based on the mixed average reviews now the user score is 6.5 but uh, let's see some of the positive reviews say an ideal blend of sim and arcade from Games Master UK Shredman says it's the best iteration of PES for some time but it certainly has its faults and it says the default player view is extremely difficult to use. Uh, game Pro gave it an 80, saying in the meantime it's the only game in town and it's certainly not a bad one at all. While it might be lacking some options to give it longer replay value, PES 2011 plays a sophisticated and subtle game of football and delivers a terrific looking 3D soccer experience. Now, I, I believe that they actually made an updated PES game in 2014, maybe 2015, um, but it's the same game, just with updated rosters, pretty much is my understanding. So, 
buying this one isn't much of a difference, probably. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to play that. I actually was pretty impressed by the, the 3D uh, visuals I saw. Um, they have a, a part of the, one of the menus when you're selecting your teams shows a little character standing up, just like from the waist up. And as it comes up to his head, it gets more 3D, so like the character really looks like they're popping off the screen. Now, um, it seemed pretty technical from when I was playing it, so I'll have to delve into that a little more on a rainy day or a Sunday afternoon um, when I have some more time. But let's get to the game that I was most excited to talk about here. Okay, and the last game I picked up was Chrono Trigger, aka Chrono Trigger, however you want to say it, for the Nintendo DS. And now uh, this game was originally a Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom release game that came out in 1995, and at the time it was released by two separate companies, Square and the company Enix who, as most of you probably know, became Square Enix later. But at the time, they were separate companies who were really good at making RPG games and really sort of established the RPG genre as we think about it today. Um, so they came together and made this game. It's been compared to games like Final Fantasy, and um, I don't even know if that's a good comparison, really, but it's, it's considered one of the best games of all time and uh, got really good receptions. Just going down the list here, 1up.com gave it an A, uh, allgame.com gave it a 90 out of 100, Electronic Gaming Monthly gave it an A, Eurogamer gave it 10 out of 10, Game Informer gave it 9 out of 10, Game Pro gave it 98, GameSpot gave it 8.5 out of 10, Game Spy gave it 99 out of 100, Games Radar 10 out of 10, IGN gave it an 8.8 .8 out of 10 in the United States and a 9.1 out of 10 in Australia. Nintendo Power gave it a 9 out of 10, official Nintendo Magazine gave it a 93, and X-Play, RIP to G4 TV, I missed that channel, uh, X-Play gave it a 5 out of 5. So. We also have our aggregate scores, Metacritic summed it up with a 92 out of 100, and GameRankings.com a 92%. So those are pretty consistent scores, and uh, I've just heard so many good things about this game, like it was in Nintendo Voice Chat's podcast recently where they sort of looked back on the game and what made it so special. There's been a lot of sequels and fan-made uh, spin-offs and stuff like that, but I've never played it, so I really don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, it was later released after the Super Nintendo on the PlayStation Nintendo DS Virtual Console, iOS, and Android devices, and uh, the game's Super Nintendo and PlayStation iterations had, you know, as of March 2003, sold 2.65 million copies, and later, um, as of March 2009, the Nintendo DS sold 790,000 copies. So that's uh, all the games I got here. I can't wait to actually play them. Might make some more videos when I uh, have some more experience with them. But uh, that's all I got for today. This is Dan with Play3DS, and this is a mailbag episode, even though I didn't get anything in the mail. I could have ordered these online, but um, I will get some more stuff in the mail in the future. But for now, that is my Nintendo mailbag. Thank you all for watching, and happy gaming.